Uh, well, let me pray before we, we look into God's word on baptism. Uh, dear Father, we pray that what we know not, that you would please teach us. Uh, what we have not, please give us, and who we are not, please make us. In Jesus' name, uh, through baptism into him, we pray this. Amen. So we're a Baptist church, and so how fitting, fitting it is for us to uh, talk about baptism today and then to see eight people baptized, right? It just fits our church name. In Acts 2.41, it seems like there were about 3,000 souls baptized. So we'll only experience a fraction of that today. Uh, with, with eight, we're going to see baptism rehearsed today as we have eight people submerged into water. However, there is a much, much deeper meaning uh, to baptism than merely the depth of water that, that one gets dunked into. Uh, in fact, the Bible emphasizes more of the eternal depth of baptism's meaning more than simply the outward act of being baptized. And so I want to remind us today that it's possible uh, for you to be baptized on the superficial outside, but not deeply baptized on the spiritual inside. Uh, and so you can go through the motions of baptism, but not experience the transformation of baptism. Um, for instance, you know that thief on the cross who died before, uh, beside Jesus, he died without ever being baptized with water, right? And yet, Christ's words nevertheless reassured him that he would be with Christ in paradise. You see that in Luke 23. And so just like that scenario today, I would like to emphasize the comfort of Christ's words concerning baptism, much more than the ceremony of baptism uh, that, that baptism brings to you. Because I want you to realize the ceremony of baptism doesn't save you, especially, especially not any kind of ex external act or effort on your end, but Christ alone, through his word, saves you. That's why in Acts 2.41, it says those who received the word were baptized. And so today I hope that we'll receive uh, the words of Christ uh, on baptism and take a deep dive into his, his eternal word. And from God's eternal word, um, I pray that we'll be baptized um, or reminded of the baptism uh, that is ours in Christ. So that by the time we get to the end of this service and we see eight people baptized externally, I hope that you understand the deeper meaning of what that actually represents. And so to look at the deep, deep, deep meaning of baptism, I want to look at Romans 6, 3 to 4. And it says this, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. And so what I want to do for us today is to help us all know, because it's possible that you don't know, as verse 3 insists, what baptism really means. You know, verse 3 says, do you not know that all of us have been baptized into Christ Jesus that we were baptized into his death. It's possible that you don't realize this. And so I'd like us to know what baptism really means. And I'd like to explain two different meanings of what baptism truly means, biblically speaking. And first of all, I want to look at what it means according to our text today. Uh, baptism practically means that you have been buried with Christ and resurrected with him. It means that you have shared that experience with him. Uh, verse 4 really gets at this when it says, we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into his death. And so, um, so baptism, externally, as we'll see it today, is this symbol that represents uh, true baptism. And true baptism is the burial of our sinful self with Christ. Um, it means you've been crucified with Christ. Um, so just as Christ was buried after dying for our sins, we also, we also have died with him for our sins and been buried with him, okay? So baptism really means a shared experience between us and Christ in the way that he died and he rose again, and we share that. Wouldn't it be nice if you knew that all of your sins were buried and your guilt buried forever gone? It would be nice, right? And it is nice, and it is true. That is true uh, for the Christian. And so practically then, this tells us um, 
that if your sins have been buried with Christ, then your sins are not something to dwell on. And there's certainly n- n- nothing to cherish either. It's possible sometimes that we as Christians, we cherish bad things, don't we? And the logic behind baptism is to say it, it's really wrong and it's stupid because you're cherishing something that is dead. It's dead with, with you uh, in the grave with Christ. It's no longer a part of you. Um, and just as Christ was buried and we buried with him, baptism speaks of also, though, how we share in his resurrection as he rose from the grave. And verse 4 states this in Romans 6. that It says, we were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we, too, might walk in newness of life. And so, just as Christ died for us and we die with him, so also Jesus rose for us and we rise with him in a practical and a spiritual sense. And in our ceremony of baptism that we'll see today, that is really pictured as you see the person immersed in water and then they, they, they come up. That represents the resurrection of Christ and coming up as a new person, a new creation, so that you can walk in newness of life. So you, you can see the practicality of this. Um, you, you go down dry and you come up wet, right? Immersed in, in liquid, in other words, you're changed. You're a changed person. And I'm convinced uh, this might be what many of you are missing today. Um, baptism logic. Have you been changed by the gospel? Where your, your, your sins are dead with Christ and you realize it. And also your life is resurrected with Christ so that you are walking in a newness of life. It's possible as Christians that we, we don't walk in a newness of life when we don't realize that, that being baptized into Christ has given us that privilege And so you need to to understand that baptism shows the shared experience of your life with Christ in his death and your your sins dying with him, buried in the grave, but also in his resurrection. And you need to realize that. In fact, the whole point of, of your sins dying and being buried with Christ in a spiritual sense is so that you can walk in a newness of life, uh, as verse four states. So let me give you an example of uh, what walking in newness of life might look uh, for us who have been baptized into Christ's resurrection too. So Martin Luther, the great reformer, apparently struggled with depression. And on one occasion, his wife Katie uh, became very tired of seeing her husband uh, mope around. And so she hung a black cloth from their doorway and also wore a black dress. Uh, Both culturally symbolized that somebody had died. And so Luther came home, and he asked his wife, who died? And his wife Katie responded with, with, God has died. And Luther got angry, and he told Katie, don't blaspheme God. And she said, well, the way that you are acting, the way that you are acting looks like God is dead. And so that sarcastic remark got Luther's attention, and so he went back to his office, and he wrote on his desk the word vivit, which is the Latin word for he lives. And the point is that it's true that the resurrection of Christ has made an impact on our life, practically speaking, so that we can walk in newness of life, even emotionally. It means that Christ lives in resurrected form And just as he lives in resurrected form, we ought to live in resurrected form um, in our actions, in our thinking, in our emotions, in our attitudes. So my question is, does that describe you? Have you experienced Christ and his death and his resurrection? Have you become a resurrected person with Christ in every single way? Well, the second and final um, picture of baptism that I'd like to uh, to show you today is how not, baptism is not only represented by dirt and being buried with Christ and resurrected with him, but it's also symbolized with dye. Okay, baptism means to be dyed in his blood. And so literally the word baptism was used for dyeing cloth back in the day. And so when dyeing a cloth, a, a dyer uh, would dip or they would baptize that cloth in, let's say, a reddish liquid. All right, and the cloth would come out um, of the liquid, of course, immersed in that reddish dye and transformed to look that reddish color. 
And so baptism means that just like a cloth being dipped in red comes up with a transformed color, likewise, we are dipped in the red dye of Christ's blood, that is his life and his death for us, and we come up immersed and changed with his life. And so we, like Christ, come up dipped in the life of Christ, but instead of being red, we come up righteous and white with the life of Christ because our sins have been forgiven. They have been slaughtered, drowned, and cremated uh, through Christ. And so Revelation 7, 14, I think, pictures this as it says, they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And that's like a little picture of baptism, being dipped in Christ's blood, sharing in his blood um, for your sins so that he purifies you. Obviously, it's a miraculous act. It's, it's much, much more significant than simply being dunked into water and then coming up wet. Um, baptism means being dipped or baptized into Christ's blood. That is his death for you that was shed for you on the cross and then coming up white. He purifies you. Does that mean, it means that Christ's life has become your life. It means that his nature has become your nature and has, has overcome your sinful nature. Uh, he substitutes your life. Um, I think baptism in this way illustrates what Ephesians 1, 3 to 4 says so well of being in Christ. You're in Christ. And Romans 6, 3 reiterates that with, with, with the phrase, we are baptized into Christ Jesus. And so what God desires for your life today is that you would be identified with Christ in such a way where you're counted in Christ uh, because you've been died with his life. And so I'm going to illustrate this for you with um, this painter stick, okay, which is going to represent you. This painter stick is, is you and I. And then this cup, of, this cup of red paint is Christ and his life and his death for us on the cross, all right, when Christ baptizes you, when you're baptized into Christ, you go down into Christ's life, uh, into his death for your sins. And, okay, so you're identified with his death. You're being died in his death. Notice, the stick is you, and you can touch it. You can feel his death for your sins. You can experience it. You can even feel his death for your sins dripping off of your soul, okay? Baptism pictures this, or I should say rather this pictures what actually happens in baptism, okay? When you come up, you come up a different person. You come up stained and identified with his life, not your life, okay? So now when God sees you, who does he see? He doesn't see the old you, but he sees you in Christ, all right? Let me put that up a bit. He sees your life in Christ. He sees the red death of Christ substituting your sins. He doesn't see the old color of your sin nature. He sees Christ living around you. You are baptized into Christ. Hopefully that makes sense. So God sees the, the, the colors of God's character substituting the tainted colors of your sin. So your old nature is gone, and Christ now is visible. He's visible through your life for other people to see. This is your life, stained in the blood of Christ, taking on the colors of Christ's nature. And that's what it means to be baptized into Christ. And that's what it means to be a Christian too, to place your faith in Jesus Christ by saying, I need to be found in Jesus Christ because God can only accept me if he sees his son, substituting my sins. And so my question is, has this happened to you? Have you been baptized into Christ Jesus in such a way where he has he has overcome your sins so that God sees them no more. Have you, as Romans 6, 3, been baptized into Christ Jesus? And in order to be baptized into Christ Jesus, I want you to realize that Jesus has to be baptized for you too. In Luke twelve fifty, Jesus said, I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. And so he's, re he's referring to his death on the cross for our sins there. And Jesus describes that as his baptism, okay? So just as we must be baptized into Christ's blood to be stained with his life, Christ was baptized into our black sin in order to be stained by our death, okay? So if I had a black uh, canister of paint with me, um, I would say this black 
cup of paint represents us and our life of sin is stained with death. And I would, I would pick up a, a white stirring, uh, stirring stick and I would say, this white stirring stick, stick represents Christ. And then I would dip the white stirring stick into our black paint and I would say, that's what happened when Christ was, when he died on the cross, he was baptized into our sin. He became sin for us who knew no sin so that we could become the righteousness of God. He didn't just, he didn't just pay for our sin, he became our sin so that our whole sin, sinful self became him, but not, not just us, but the sins of the whole world. And so you can see based on Luke 12 that, that Jesus' baptism saves you, not yours. It's not your effort to become baptized that saves you. Otherwise, you would be saved by work and not by God's free gift of grace. Okay, so it's not our effort to become baptized that saves us. Okay, it's not ours, it's Christ's. You've got to understand that it was Christ's work of being baptized into your sins onto the cross that saves us. He was baptized for us, as Luke 12 insists. He swallowed up death for our sake. It was Jesus who was dipped into the waves of God's wrath for our sins. And so now we've got to receive baptism by faith. We've got to receive his baptism for us by faith. Okay, so you can see baptism is really something more that you need to receive than to do. You need to receive Christ's baptism for you instead of doing a baptism for God. It's not baptism that saves you. It's Christ who saved you through his baptism that he accomplished for us as he was stained with our sin. And now you've got to be stained with his life so that you're in Christ. And so that's what really Romans 6, 3 is saying as it says, we were baptized into Jesus Christ. And so for my Christian friends, let me remind you that God sees you differently than often how you feel. You may feel like the inner part of this stick, but God sees the life of Christ around you. And if you're not a Christian today and you've never been baptized into Christ today, meaning you've never said, I need Christ to overwhelm my life and to literally substitute my sins, then do, as Acts 2.38 says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That means that Christ will come to live within you and substitute your life. But most of you, I think, have probably experienced baptism today, meaning you're Christians, And for you, I just want to reiterate what Romans 6, 3 says. It says, do you not know that all of you who have been, who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death, meaning you were. It's a fact, but remember it. Do you not know it? Have you forgotten? Verse 4 says, we were were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. And I want you to notice the might there. That's because experiencing the power of Christ's life in our life is contingent on us knowing about it and deciding to live it out. And so let me ask you, are you living your life sporting the life of Christ on the outside of you? Or are you deciding to cover up your life of Christ that you have been baptized into by staining it with the colors of your sin or just trying to cover it up because you're ashamed of looking like Christ? Are you ashamed of the cross? So our challenge as Christians is to every day, as Romans 6 verse 11 goes on to say, consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. So do you consider this on a daily basis that Christ is your life? Do you consider it? You know, Ephesians 4, 5 says there's only one baptism, but God is saying in Romans 6, you've got to constantly consider that one baptism. That is the relationship that you have with Christ in your life every single day of your life. Remember it. It's even a command. As verse 11 says, you must consider this. As Christians, we need to be, we need to be obedient to the gospel every day, remembering that Christ substituted our life and he still does, and he still wants to live through us. And so hopefully as we watch these baptisms occur today, it will be a reminder and an illustration of something greater that Christ has already done for you. 
And I hope that as Christians, it'll, it'll remind us of the gospel, of the fact that Jesus was dunked into our sins for us. And we, in turn, we need to be dunked into his life uh, for our sins. But what happens, we come up gloriously new. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that uh, you are a God of mercy and a God who loves us and a God who would actually suffocate in the waters of our sin uh, and, and your wrath for our sake. Uh, Father, I pray that we as a church would walk in newness of life, realizing that uh, you have empowered us to walk in a newness of life through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God, it is not something that we can do. It is something that you have already done for us. Uh, Father, we pray that as we, we watch these baptisms occur, we would only be reminded of the greater miracle of what Christ has done for us when he was baptized for our sake and he died and he was, he was in the grave for three, three days but he came up victoriously. Help us, God, as a church live gloriously baptized lives in Christ and we pray this in his name, amen.